There's a lot more to hacking than spending long hours writing incomprehensible lines of code. In today's video, we are going to give you a wide angle perspective on what it means to be a hacker, the six different types of hackers that exist, what each one does, and how to transform into a law-abiding ethical hacker. We will also discuss the risks associated with white hat hacking and the specific tools you need to master to be better at your job. Hacking is difficult and a real craft, so make notes. Brace yourself and get ready for some real interesting stuff. Let's go. Who is a hacker? When you're asked this question, the images that probably pop up in your mind are a variety of unpleasant stuff orchestrated against individual privacy and corporate data. But hacking never started out in this way. In the 1960s, the term hacker was used to describe someone who was highly competent in the use of computer code and could use that knowledge to optimize the efficiency. This term later developed into a title for someone with an advanced understanding of computer systems capable of utilizing it to identify technical problems. It has also come to refer to one of the first few thoughts you typically have when you hear it spoken. Certainly, hacker can and do obtain unauthorized access to computer systems with the aim of launching attacks on a company, individual, or government agency software infrastructure. Can hacking be called a lifestyle? Well, some like to think of it as such. Besides money, there are different reasons why people choose to become hackers. Let's dive into the six categories of different hackers. Black hat hackers can have reasons that range from a desire to secure bragging rights for hacking into a seemingly complex system, tormenting people's lives for the pleasure of it, or simply getting a peek at the massive volumes of information that public and private establishments establishments would rather not show. Gray hat hackers do what they do for the security of databases, albeit through illegal means, and they sort of straddle the line between hacking for ethical reasons and doing it in an entirely wrong way. An example is this Palestinian guy, Khalil Shreite, who hacked and posted on Zuckerberg's Facebook account in 2013. He had reported a security flaw to the Facebook team, and when the response was unsatisfactory, decided to take matters into his own hands. White hat hackers are the angels of the lot. They are competent and recognizable industry professionals who try to anticipate the works of malicious hackers by spotting system weaknesses before they do. While the actual term was coined by IBM Vice President John Patrick in 1995, white hats have been around for almost as long as the idea of hacking itself. In the 1970s, governments created teams to run vulnerability tests on telecommunications and computer networks. These tests are essentially attacks that black hats would perform, only this time they are done with the permission and knowledge of the organization. Perks of white hat hacking? You get passed over on jail time, obtain recognition as a legitimate hacker, and if you're that sort of person, maybe an entire desk to yourself in a gigantic office building. Besides black, gray, and white, there are even more categories like blue, red, and green hat hackers. Blue hat hackers are divided into two categories. The first category is a group of revenge seekers who use their understanding of computer systems to attack people or organizations they think have offended them. They can obtain access to social media accounts and databases to steal information about their targets and release it to the public. The reason for this is usually to cause damage to the reputation of their victims. The second category of blue hat hackers are the less vindictive types. They are external security professionals who are invited by a company to test software for vulnerabilities before deploying it for use. They do not cause damage to the system as they merely try to discover potential weaknesses. They may also be hired for collaboration with the company on a periodic basis. Red Hat hackers, on the other hand, gain popularity for their lack of forgiveness. If you want to mess with the facility, make sure there are no Red Hatters around, as they tend to go overboard in their reprisals. Red Hat hackers are similar to White Hats in the sense that they have noble reasons for what they do but diverge in their professional choices. A Red Hat will typically uncover a Black Hat hacker, then launch different attacks to cripple their system. They are aggressive and will do ultimate damage to participants they find threatening. Finally, Green Hat hackers, like their name implies, are newbies in the world of computer manipulation. They are enthusiastic about hacking, but also do not know enough to properly navigate systems. While experimenting with techniques they could potentially cause damage without meaning to, and with zero ideas of how to fix it. Blue, red, and green classes of hackers can be said to be more flexible than the first three as they allow hackers to switch roles depending on their intentions. Since being a black or gray hat hacker is almost certain to get you on the wrong side of the law, we will only discuss white hat or ethical hackers. Why would you become one? Before deciding to become one, the first thing you need to know is that ethical hackers are not exactly the richest of the pack. So if you're heading into the industry with the belief that you can make a ton of money, reality check, this job might not be for you. On the flip side, if you intend to practice hacking for the actual professional thrill, you just might land yourself a definitive and highly rewarding career path. White hat hackers are consistently in demand because of the activities of bad actors on protected systems. They earn an annual salary that is north of eighty dollars to $100,000, but beyond that, get to be the bad guys without being the bad guys. 
Think of it this way. You get to run attacks and find vulnerabilities to your heart's content, develop fixes, and then get paid without needing to send a ton of nasty messages, or hook the FBI up on your internet footprints. Also, you get access to better hacking training and resources than black hats. Most large companies you will work with will already have a budget in place for network security. They will naturally invest this in training their experts in new techniques, translating to a broader learning horizon than a self-funded actor would normally get. What are the risks? Still, white hat hackers do not always have it smooth. Because organizations have to preserve expensive equipment from damage, hackers have to tiptoe around them in penetration tests. There is a limit to how aggressive they can be as damage to systems could lead to financial loss. On top of this, simulations do not always represent the real world. Equipment costs will typically prevent companies from providing additional facilities for test purposes, forcing hackers to assume that malicious actors will follow the same pattern as their bare minimum attacks. What needs to be done to become one yourself? Now that you know the benefits and the risks of white hat hacking, let's talk about the things you need to do step by step to become one. You can find all the links to the tools that are mentioned in the video in the description. Master Linux. Are you using Windows or Mac OS at the moment? Stop it right away. The Linux OS is one of the most secure operating systems in the world today. It is a favorite among security experts and is leveraged in the development of multiple internet-based devices. Hackers are often advised to understand Linux because it also runs on open source code which individuals and corporations can manipulate to their tastes. Added to these is its transparent nature, which is one of the biggest wins over Windows ecosystem and a deciding factor for companies that prioritize control. A lot of the tools that you will use for hacking, such as Python and Bash, are also designed for the system, making it an inevitable resource anyway. Kali Linux and Black Arch are currently some of the most common distributions for use at the moment. They incorporate numerous hacking tools, more than 2300 in the case of Black Arch. Kali Linux is both a fan favorite and the most stable of the pair due to its existence over a longer period. Develop general computer skills. Another thing you cannot do without is the possession of computer skills. This is the most elementary bit of a white, in fact any hacker's professional life. You need to be competent in file management, data processing, spreadsheets, presentations, etc. to evolve into a fully rounded hacker. Train yourself in the use of Microsoft applications, database management, social media, web, enterprise systems and all the other major stuff that will prove critical to your role. Understand computer networking. A computer network is essentially the interplay of multiple host devices, which extend across data transmitted pathways. To become an ethical hacker, it is important to acquire skills in subnetting, supernetting, DHCP, and a variety of others. These enable you to look deeply into how network components operate and the vulnerabilities that might exist in their structure. Once you are familiar with that area, you can then proceed to outline the most appropriate responses to specific threats. It is equally important to understand that the field of computer networking is quite broad and will require you to take learning one step at a time. Learn computer programming. Programming is basically the construction of commands in a language that the computer understands and can execute with. It is one of the most important pillars of an ethical hacker's career and is best learned with practice. There are different programming languages you can use as an ethical hacker, but the most recommended one would be a multi-purpose language to help you automate several of your deliverables. There are web programming languages like HTML, CSS, PHP, MySQL, and JavaScript. There are also others like C and Python. All of these are pretty straightforward to learn and will reflect in the level of versatility you demonstrate. Learn to reverse engineer. The essence of an ethical hacker in any organization is to fortify the system against intrusion. To do that, you need to identify weaknesses in the architecture and reconstruct them such that they can successfully repel attacks. Reverse engineering is a very helpful way to do this. It basically means that you analyze a product's code and redesign it down to the minutest specifications. This enables you to identify flaws and equip the system against incursions. Database management. Another important part of your job is being able to relate with the organization systems in a way that helps you to protect them effectively. Like regular security at a physical establishment, you need to know the layout of what you are expected to protect and the interrelationship of different segments. The same applies to database management wherein the bits and pieces are crystal clear to you and you can develop protective measures to interact with it. Learn about server and client side attacks. Server-side attacks are designed to compromise data stored on a target server. They include DDoS attacks, SQL injection, and DOS. Client-side attacks, on the other hand, are aimed at software on the device of a client or user. It typically occurs when you unknowingly download malicious software onto your desktop or mobile device. By learning how both work, you can orchestrate one yourself or shield against it. Understand hardware. There are different parts of a computer system. They include your mouse, keyboard, speaker, monitor, etc. To utilize a computer, you need to know how these parts work and their specific functions. In the process of man-to-machine communication, this way you can deliver accurately to a network the exact functions you want 
it to embody. Information gathering. A hacker's job is incomplete if he does not understand the rudiments of collecting information. Remember that being an ethical hacker does not translate to not doing what black hatters will normally do. You must be able to collect information on various internet platforms in the same way to understand how they might be exploited in an attack run. Hone your skills in entry and exit techniques leveraging tools like Unicorn Scan, Nmap, Dig, and your value as a white hat will exponentially increase. Cryptography. If you want to prevent sensitive data from landing in the hands of a third party, you need to secure such information by encrypting it so that even when it is accessed, it makes no sense to an intruder and cannot be utilized. Cryptography is concerned with the techniques used in obscuring the true meaning of data. It revolves around the idea of information security and will be required for forcing malicious hackers to wonder why they even bothered in the first place. Learn to use hacking tools. Finally, as a hacker, you need to be up to date on changes within the industry. What tools are being developed? The latest techniques that malicious hackers use. On the tools end, familiarize with Metasploit, which eases the entire process of breaching a system. Jack the Ripper for cracking user passwords. BEEF for launching sophisticated attacks on web browsers. Burp Suite for vulnerability tests and a bunch of others. By the way, let us know in the comments which other tools are interesting and we will add them in the description later. Practice solo. Much of your actual expertise will come from the efforts you apply yourself. Earlier, we talked about green hat hackers and how they tend to be disaster-causing agents to avoid being one you need to invest heavily in improving your skill set. Besides hands-on practice, you could also engage in studying books that have been written on hacking. It not only helps you to become an authority in your niche, it also exposes you to knowledge that will ordinarily not be discussed in hacker conversations or encountered in practical sessions. Make money as soon as possible. To make becoming a hacker much more satisfying, try to make money as soon as possible. For example, you can join online communities like Bugs Bounty and Hackerone. They allow you to earn while discovering vulnerabilities and practicing at the same time. Enroll in online courses. And last but not least, signing up for the courses can really broaden your horizon as an ethical hacker. There are also a number of certifications that add credibility to your status. The interesting part about this is that these programs require you to have logged a certain number of hours in computing experience and will as such be a crucial determinant at the employment stage. For all the enthusiasts that want to start their hacking career right away in the description, you're going to find all the links to the tools mentioned and some special offers for helpful courses. Don't wait and start today, because the only way to learn hacking is by doing. And that's the end of today's video. If you made it to this point, it means you are prepared to make the best of your enthusiasm for professional hacking and are a step ahead already. Are you starting your hacking career right away, or at least think of it? And what type of hacker do you want to be? Leave your thoughts in the comment section, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and see you in the next one.